everyone, and uh, welcome to our 30 minute weekly webinar. My name is Dre. I'm with Verify, and today I'm joined by Matt Sykes, another SC over here at Verify. I'm quite certain most of you have heard his voice here on here before or have probably worked with him, uh, him already. Good morning, Matt. Morning, Dre. Hello, all. All right. All right. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that we have released our Verify Cloud offering for CDR call analytics and dashboard. If this is of any interest to you, uh, please let us know or contact your Verify account rep for more information. Uh, for today's webinar, we're going to be talking about uh, what we got in store for our 12.3 release. We're going to uh, we're going to start off with a quick overview of our company, what we do. We'll jump to a live demo where Matt will guide us through uh, some of the new stuff in 12.3. 12, uh, 12 we'll pause for Q&A and get some of your questions answered during the demo. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the Q&A pad on the bottom right of the screen. After Q&A, we, re we will reward one lucky attendee with a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around and see if you want. All right, Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX reporting, remote phone control and change management. But, th but today we're going to be focusing on that 12.3 release. If you have any other questions on any of our other features, we can most likely take them offline and get those answered. Before we get started, I want to announce that Verify Now offers a service that provides managed consulting services to our customers. Verify's SC team will be engaged on a one on one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, unassisted reporting, dashboarding, configuration, and system monitoring assistance. This is a service that provides a dedicated Verify SC to do the heavy lifting of report creation and generation. For more information, please contact us and we'd be glad to speak more in depth about our new service offering. All right, let's get into the demo. Matt will get us started. Let me pass you the ball, sir. Righty. A lot to touch on here. Mm -hmm. All right, you should have the ball now, sir. I do. All right, I think I'm sharing screen too. Let me drag this header out of the way. All right, hello all. Matt Sykes with Verify once again here. Dre, thank you for the opening. Um, what we're looking at right here is just a verify.com website. I have taken our eyes to the product downloads page just to make everyone of, uh, aware that we are now offering our 12.3 EFT1 as a beta option. Uh, it will be GA, I do believe, more end of September, so in a handful of weeks. But if you wanted to take advantage of the EFT and the offering at the time, you certainly may. So the first thing for uh, the 12.3 is probably most certainly going to be Cube. So I wanna talk about Cube real briefly before we go into the app for it. So I'm gonna to go to our products page and go to the what's new real briefly. This will always have our what's new, what's being shipped in the current release. Our current GA is the 12.2.4, but obviously the beta for .30 is available now. But certainly we can scroll down here and see exactly what uh, has been shipped, but also we can see some of the pieces that are newest. So right here, we can certainly see that in, in the uh, 12.3.0, EF21 supports the, uh, the Cube iOS reporting. So that's what we're going to focus on. That's definitely one of the main takeaways from the 12.3 uh, the enhancements in this release. So we'll speak to that. Chat delivery, we're going to get into that as well, and then other bits and pieces. Um, so I just want to make everyone aware. Now, the cube reporting that Verify is going to offer is going to look very, very similar to the UCM CDR reporting. So I'm just kind of navigating over here that you can certainly walk through at your leisure as well, but very easy just to kind of walk you through the same kind of style of search functionality that we have from the history section, laying out a call details table here for optional column inclusions or suppressions, as well as you know, the search set filterables. So they really can build that out, as well as kind of build the same style of reports with period over period metrics for the cube data, as well as you know, granular level of uh, detail, as well as um, chartings as well. So certainly the, the chartings that we have for UCM CDR widgets and reports, as well as Context Center Express, will certainly have those available for cube as well. And that is what we're going to start with here today. So I'm going to jump into a couple of different uh, labs here today just to showcase uh, the 12.3 content. So I'm starting off today in this lab that we're viewing right now. And it looks very, very similar to the UCM CDR history section. Um, it looks pretty much the same, uh, albeit minus this, uh, the denotion of the cluster style. So this is cube versus the UCM. So this is what we want to play with. Now it's certainly going to be, you know, apples to oranges, it's not going to have the exact same columns and search criteria that the UCM CDR uh, has. Different data sets, so that should make sense. Um, 
easily hitting the uh, the drop down search criteria option here, we can certainly see what the configurable options are or searchable criteria is out of verify for the cube data elements. So I could also even use this, you know, this offered one right here just below, just like with UCM CDR, we do offer original call party number. All of our, condi our conditional operators will still apply with inclusions and suppressions, as well as uh, the, uh, the call duration filter as well. But as always, we can use a single character capital X wildcard with the starts with um, operator. And I think in this data, I've got some, this lab, excuse me, I have some June data. Let me just uh, show Kings that real briefly. Now we're not going to speak too intent on this, uh, on this data detail, but it's more or less kind of showing the higher level functionality of the search functionality that should be pretty present for people that use this application for the UCM CDR reporting and search functionality. All right, I've got, uh, okay, for the previous two months, this is June day, but I've got you know, 67,000 call regs from Q. Now, each one of these call records is gonna have multiple events. Most of the time, there are going to be two of them. There's going to be uh, an answer and an originate H3 through two, three records, or excuse me, events within the record. So just like before with the UCM CDR, I've added all the columns in here for just you know, demonstration purposes. Definitely don't need to have them all in there. I don't think anybody has the call manager columns in there. If you do, I would probably suggest against that. Just because of so many uh, data uh, elements that you may not need. But very easy, I'm throwing them all in here. We can, we can see them all, scroll through them. I can resort them just like in the UCM CDR or the UC stack style of reporting. So all that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't plan to speak to any of these columns or the configurables or the setup for this just yet. I think we've covered that on a previous webinar and have, <clears throat> and have one coming up on a, a subsequent one in the future. So same rules apply here. As far as you know, the reporting structure, we can certainly create and cultivate reports for cube based off of um, cube elements. So we'll certainly be uh, harnessing, you know, the search criteria for the cube elements themselves, um, not uh, anything specific to UCM CDR or CCX, just make sure that uh, you have that denotion difference. But we will also be able to you know, search that, group it by specific um, <laughs> cube group grouping types as well. So certainly we can see those if we need to. And then including high level summarizations with uh, additional data types that you may want to uh, add into the uh, into the reports with all as always you know the time uh, the period over period or the time based reporting tables and or charts and as well as we can certainly include that the uh, the detail of these uh, the call elements that we get from cube for this module or for this style of cluster and once again i'll just kind of I don't have too much built for it, as you can see at the moment in this lab, but I will just segue real briefly for those 70,000 plus calls into a dashboard. I briefly mocked up with some cube data here. Now, once again, our dashboards are cluster independent. I can have UCM and UCCX and cube style widgets living on the same dashboard harmoniously without uh, cause for concern there. And this one I'm keying off of some 800 numbers. This should be at my capacity utilization uh, line graph here. Here we are. Um, once again, I only had a few days in June, but very, very similar to the results that you would get from a, a UCM CDR capacity style widget. Same rules apply here. Availability to strike out um, line graph plots from the legend. Let's see, my high water mark here happens to be June 6th at the 6 a.m. hour. There were 14 concurrent calls from an 800 line. So if I needed to, I could find June 7th, uh, let's see, June 7th. And June 7th, I can strike out that day specifically and plot and remove that for the plotted line graph, just like the UCM CDR widgets and the CCX ones as well. Will not harm the, uh, the high level search summarizations, but also we can break this into graphicals just like the, the UCM and the UCCX data elements as well. This is just cube focused for uh, today's presentation. So I've just built these two solely just for some uh, example purposes here for some content out of this lab. But the configurations should look somewhat similar now and there are settings here in the upper right here of the app. Now underneath clusters, you will see a cube iOS cluster option that will come with uh, obviously a little different uh, cluster setup. So not that we're gonna walk through all of this and how to set all of this up. We have documentation and previous webinars on this, but just to show you just the kind of the basics for the cube iOS cluster setup. So name, enterprise, host name, IPs, time zone preference, et cetera. The file, file accounting data processing settings that we're solidifying for processing and retention as well as well as it will be also encapsulated into a, a SQL database for uh, historical reportability. Okay. So I'm not really gonna touch too, go too much deeper on that, I suppose. I suppose I can segue real briefly over to uh, our knowledge base. I'm not going to ours, excuse me. And we do have a, a programmable, programmable, excuse me, knowledge base article for Cube. So I'll search the KB search engine for Cube. And here is the Cube uh, setup. So we're not going to go through all of this. I believe Danimal has already previously done that on a previous webinar, but if you needed the, uh, 
the router configuration information and some higher level uh, information, certainly this knowledge base article will be of uh, great importance for you. So certainly please uh, visit that when needed. So definitely uh, CUBE support in uh, Verify 12.3 is paramount. We are very proud of this and uh, it's just getting out the door uh, as we speak. We have it loaded on a handful of uh, EFT clients right now as, as we speak, uh, always looking for more. But once again, this uh, will be available in GA towards the end of uh, September when we do release this 12.3.0 version. Okay. Next in the 12.3 new offerings is going to be chat support, or I guess chat delivery support for reports and alerts for Cube, CUCM, as well as Contact Center. So I'm going to pick on uh, another one of my demo labs here. And this is uh, my, my, one of my own personal mat labs here. But just to show you the configuration gear up here in this lab underneath the notification and delivery, so before, certainly when you're in reports, you're in alerts, and I'll maybe just take your eyes there real briefly. If I were to play any of my reports that I have for this cluster in material of what they are, um, my delivery option. So certainly we have download email and repository as we have before, but now we actually have chat. Chat needs a little bit of onboarding for setting up a WebEx bot. And I do want to mention, make mention of this, that we are only supporting WebEx chat for report and alert deliverables in 12.3 as of now. We'll certainly look to incorporate additional chat spaces, but uh, at the moment we will um, silo on uh, just the WebEx chat for now. So I will show you, uh, let, me just, let me segue here for a second and grab um, a chat from the Verify ever populated knowledge base article library. So I type in chat, so I'm looking for configurables to how to set up the chat box or Verify, so the WebEx chat bot. So this, can, this uh, KB article will walk you through how to create a bot, how to set it up, how to communicate it with Verify and how to load it and utilize it within Verify. So I believe Mike covered that briefly earlier on a previous webinar, as well as I think he's doing another one, so I'm not gonna walk through that. I'll let him do that, but jump back to my lab here, excuse me. So with having all of the um, the chat WebEx bot, or the WebEx chat bot, excuse me, um, configuration <clears throat> already done for me, we can certainly use the, the chat deliverable option for reports. So I can send them to either a group off of my, uh, my bot that I have already pre-configured, could be going out to, you know, an additional space that have multiple colleagues and peers of mine that may want to receive alerts and reports as well, or I can solidify it and send it you know, directly to myself. Um, at the moment, this is uh, going to send it as a file attachment. I can also send it as a hyperlink within the, uh, the chat to the space um, and then download it from there. Certainly have uh, options, but also this plays through to the, um, the alerts as well. So if we're looking at 911 alerts or some type of uh, duration threshold alerts, or repeat uh, cause code alerts, and certainly we can trigger and uh, deliver those alerts to the, uh, the WebEx chat space as well. So just to showcase this real briefly, I've kind of hit a lot of my stuff here. Um, this is actually going to be my lab bot here. So from this lab that we're entertaining at the moment, last night I was playing around with this and uh, dropped a couple alerts into my lab just to make sure that they would trigger and then deliver to this chat space here. So this is just an alert, but I could certainly, you know, if I wanted to, I can send myself a little test message here or I can send this report, excuse me. So maybe I'll just uh, run this report and have it delivered to myself. And that should be trickling into my, uh, my chat bot momentarily. And there I got the update and here it is. Here's the report, here's the full attachment. I can download it and open it and take a look at it if I like, or I can go back into whatever copy that was. Actually, I don't need to edit it. Let me just run this on the fly. And chat, and then I can, or I can set it as a link. Let me just pull this over and I can run that. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. You can certainly have it <clears throat> as a file attachment or as the link. If I click on the download link here, it will download that PDF directly to my machine. So certainly uh, a lot of good use cases there for report deliverables. This is sending to me you know, individually. Um, I, once again, I could certainly send it to a group chat or add my bot to, the, uh, to a space, to a WebEx space, and then inc incorporate uh, all those other uh, recipients in that space to receive alerts and uh, reports uh, in that avenue as well. Um, I have another lab. Uh, let's actually just take a quick peek at the, uh, the OX chat bot. So that will be underneath the notification and delivery. We'll go to chat bots here. Certainly you'll need the, uh, the pre-boarding the pre and onboarding of the, the creation of the WebEx chat bot first. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in my lab here, I have a, a WebEx chat bot already set up. You can see the nice little WebEx chat icon. Let me zoom in for everyone's eyes. That may be a little faint. Okay, let's go ahead and edit this. Tokens, all of that, the config page will walk you through all of that. But once configured, then I can very easily either send to my group or I can send individually to myself if I just wanted to send a test message. Certainly I can, green should be successful. It was, 
and pull my WebEx chat back over and then see the chat that I just got from my, uh, my chat bot. Okay. So certainly very easy to deliver reports. Um, here's another one off of one of the other labs that I had sent us uh, over the past couple of days. And also my automated schedules. So I definitely have a CCX and inbound hunt group reports that I have running off another lab that are running on frequency that can very easily deliver to individuals and single communications for a chat bot or for a chat deliverable in WebEx or, in, or, to, uh, or to a group, excuse me, that has uh, multiple peers and colleagues that uh, can review and get the same alerts and or reports as well. Now, this certainly encompasses uh, call manager CUCM as well as contacts on our express and the new supported cube. Okay. So that should be pretty straightforward. Once again, I'm not going to walk through all the uh, the documentation. I don't want to uh, spill over any further than I, I fear that we we already may. So okay, so that's going to cover um, the WebEx chat deliverable in 12.3. So next, I'm going to mosey on down to our contact center reportability. So we have a couple options here or a, a new bells and whistles that I want to make you aware of. And first I'll start out with um, a handled time or I guess our, our handled count and our ring no answer or RNA count. Now I have two labs um, that are side by side that won't look uh, attractive if I show them onesie twosie. So I'm going, I do have a screenshot of one I'm just going to layer on top so we can kind of follow in tune here. Now one lab, actually this lab that we're viewing right now does not have the new code to handle this, but obviously it most certainly is in the EFT uh, as well as uh, the GA that is right around the corner. But the logic uh, that has been modified here is that, um, let's briefly look at these here. Um, so for the summarization, I'm keying off of three agents here, Bruce, uh, Batman, Charlie Murphy, and uh, Kenny here. So we can see 32 total calls have come inbound through the ICD to this, uh, to this contact center. Um, we can see 15 of them were I, I apologize, back, a little backwards here, up top. So we see 27 are of the inbound handled variety and then five were abandoned, 32. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. However, um, what was being included in this 27 actually are some RNAs. So, and if I look down below, there's 12 of them. So realistically, the count for the inbound ICD handled should be 15 as opposed to 27. And I can make case to uh, why that is. Um, it really comes down to um, calls that are presented to us from contact center that actually have no talk time or work time, um, but unfortunately are classified as handled. So thusly they were getting, in the old code, let's say they were being populated in the handled call account where they really weren't being handled. They were really being, it really was a ring no answer on the, uh, to the agent. So that's really what these are. So these necessarily weren't handled and we did update the code to give respect for calls that were not handled and are of that ring no answer variety. Now, I have a couple of reports to back that up. Just to make sure, just, to, just so everyone knows that I'm not making this up on the fly. <laughs> so, okay, a little smaller data set. Looks like a little data has uh, increased by 12, but that's fine. The same rules will apply here. Right, I have two reports, one with the old logic, one with the new logic. So we see 20, this is the old logic. So this is 20 calls that were presented for these, uh, these three uh, agents here. 16 were handled, four were abandoned, but we're not classifying what was ring no answer. So I'll just populate this or highlight this real briefly, and I'm sure I can easily pick out one of these. One will certainly have zero talk time and work time. This one looks like a perfect example right here. So this one, unfortunately, was previously being classified as a handled queue call or a queue disposition or the contact disposition was a handled call, which was a little inaccurate because there is no talk time or work time. Certainly there was ring time, but it shouldn't be getting classified as a handled count or a handled call, excuse me. So now in the new logic, we will showcase actually at, well, the 10, 10 versus, uh, I'm sorry, what was it? Lost my summary, 10 versus 16, excuse me. So there's six that are probably ring no answer that we're now identifying. And here they are, excuse me. These columns are a little, little over. So 20 that were presented, these were previously 16, but now with the new logic, we are adhering to identifying ring no answer calls that were presented inbound on the ICD manner and making a subsection or a column to denote that. So we can probably even, and here's one perfect example. Now, instead of calling this a handled because it has zero, uh, zero talk or work time, we also are including now a handled time. Handled time is actually encompassing, I believe, talk time and work time, not ring time. I think it, may, I think it also encompasses a hold time as well. So there's a combination that is now being handled, being, being, being handled in handled time for lack of a better term. But now we're at least identifying the calls that are not being handled, um, that are of the zero duration variety, not just that, are, that they're abandoned. The abandonment would certainly come from the inbound caller, but definitely if there's a ring no answer, we want to identify that and not just present it as handled. So that has been cleaned up. So that is the difference between the two. So now we actually have the newer 
RNA style of count that we can very easily report on within the CCX reports, but also incorporate in the, these dashboard widgets as well. Okay. Um, certainly, you can get a, uh, a good feel for that once you, uh, if you want to update to the dot three, uh, the dot three EFT one, certainly you can, or you can wait for the GA. But also with the uh, twelve two three EFT one or the or the GA once it's available, it's going to be a high um, HA for the CCX, so high availability. So at the present, I'll just show you here real briefly from one of my contact center clusters. Let me zoom in for your eyes. So you probably have seen before that we, we, we have included a secondary server within the CCX cluster configurations. Now, however, this has just been a placeholder, unfortunately. So if your primary were to go down, you would have to manually come in here and, and flip-flop them manually, switching the IPs and host names from the, the primary to the uh, secondary and vice versa. Um, now in the 12.3 Verify, we'll do this automatically. We we're going to have actually some provisioning um, settings so that we can specify how many times we want to have Verify re-attempt during failover. But in 12.3 GA of Verify, UCCX will have high availability fail, failover from primary to secondary and, and or secondary to primary. I just want to make that uh, apparent. I don't have any, any luxurious screenshots to show you or anything to exercise to mimic for, of a failover right now just for lack of time. But certainly do know that high availability is available in Verify 12.3 GA. All right, now we're going to speak to some um, call manager groupings. So from the reportings, let me just jump into uh, one of my other labs here. I'll use that 10 here. We'll use that 10. I'll drop back to um, one of my reports. Actually, let's actually use this. I have a hunt group report over here, I think. Here's a normal hunt group report that I share uh, quite often of the inbound variety. Um, this is the search set statistic bot line item a high level summarization and then the secondary grouping for summary. Um, what we're going to include in the 12.3 version of Verify is actually support for uh, digit based grouping search sets. So in this report, I'm using a, uh, a grouping a grouping type of department and then end user ID underneath this, but we're going to allow subsequent search sets off of that criteria to be focused on, I guess, number patterns for lack of a better term. And what do I mean by that? Good question. Let's go take a quick look at that report example. And I have another report to then showcase what I mean. And I'm not, okay, excuse me. Yeah. There we go, we'll take a look at this guy real briefly. So what do I mean by including those grouping search sets? So within the report, this is my hunt group example here report, keying off of the, the main pilot number. And then we're grouping based off of the terminating department as we saw in the results there. It looks like it's maintenance and then another one, but maintenance and then the end users underneath that maintenance department. So within, so it's gonna go maintenance or whatever department the, the people handling those calls off that hunt are going to end up in. And then I'm gonna secondarily group it by their IDs. So also what we can do within here is within the grouping section is also create search sets. Maybe I don't care, maybe I don't want to have showcase all of these users. Maybe I only want maybe a couple of the higher level or maybe the, the power answer people, for instance, maybe these people that are, have low counts at the bottom here are of the manager variety. Maybe we want to key on Bill, Nikki, and Kimberly. You can certainly do that. But within the 12.3 Verify, you um, you will now be able to actually key off of DNs. So previously, we couldn't use a, a party pattern as a, a grouping search set. Now I have that functionality to do so. So I maybe call uh, that wrong one. It's final. I want to use final call party number as a grouping search set that logic will now be supported in 12.3. I could very easily key off of what the corresponding you know, uh, extension numbers or DN numbers are for these corresponding group users here, and then lay them out in a report that will look something along these lines. Let me zoom in for your eyes. So if I wanted that section grouped off of, even though on the previous example, I was grouping off of department, but if I wanted to group off of a, a DN or a, a called party pattern, I certainly can. Um, then I can create grouping searches based off of this, these DNs to pull back the information I want showcased in this grouping summarized section. Once again, if I don't want to show the lower amount of uh, calls handled, maybe these are the supervisor extensions or some, some spare fill-in users or agents, and we only want to key on the top three, very easily now we'll have the logic and support to go ahead and create grouping search sets based off of DNs or based off of number patterns. Those number patterns are going to incor incorporate um, a myriad of different options with regards to uh, directions of calls. So definitely the calling party numbers, original finals, and all their happy combinations therein. So I'm not going to not going to pull the uh, the whole curtain away to see uh, behind the curtain, but definitely uh, that will be available in 12.3 right around the corner and is available in the EFT as of today. Okay. All right. Um, let's and also oh, excuse me and also with that logic. Pardon me, getting ahead of myself. 
I do want to show, is this it? It's not it. All right, one moment. And now the WebEx header is in my way. It's provisioning. Here we are. This is what I want to show. Also, grouped zero line items in that grouping section. So here's another screenshot, just for a moment. Come on, there we are. Blow this up. So also, if that grouping section, let me zoom in for your eyes. Don't worry about what's highlighted here in the in the red uh, in the red box here. What I want to showcase really is this functionality for the DN based or digit based groupings in the section here, and as well as the availability to showcase uh, the zero counts as well. So primarily, pre previously we weren't uh, listing out the zero grouped entities, uh, it was one or greater, but now we can actually showcase um, and include what's, in, what's part of the grouping search set to actually be a zero line item if that needs to be seen on the report results in that grouping summary section. Say that three times fast. Okay, that is new logic once again available in Verify 12.3. And we'll wrap this with last uh, two last pieces here. Um, one is, which is gonna be, um, I'll touch on the, the milder one. Um, we will be supporting a TLS 1.3 in Verify 12.3. So HTTPS for TLS 1.3, it will be available in 12.3. Nothing attractive to show you on that, just verbally mentioning that, that that will be supported in our, uh, our newest release. But the last piece I do wanna wrap all this with is going to be, auto provisioning of users within Verify. So what I can share will be this little slick right here. So what we will be able to do in Verify 12.3, one prereq will actually be to have the SAML configuration already turned on and configured for us with, cert, with, with certs and all that good fun stuff. But once we have that, that configured, that prereq done for us, then we will have the availability to turn on SSO auto user provisioning. Now this will give the access for you know, the admin so that they don't need to come in and you know, onesie twosie create every admin or every user within uh, Verify so that they can log into the uh, application and run reports. This can be done a little more higher at a group level with this uh, with provisioning with checks and balances therein. So I'm not going to uh, steal the thunder on that because we will focus on a webinar on that in the, in the weeks to come. But definitely uh, auto user provisioning is going to be fantastic for the admins when rolling out uh, new groups of users into the system so that no one has to sit down and create you know, 50 different uh, app users for, uh, for verified login purposes. Okay. So other than that, and um, just showcasing uh, anything else that we have or any of the, uh, excuse me, the help topics, but definitely uh, to try it out. So definitely the upcoming ones that we do have for 12.3 will be the, uh, I briefly touched on the handle and the ring time and the ring, uh, ring no answer options that will be coming down uh, next week, as well as the detail uh, extension and grouping by the DNs, as I had mentioned, as well as we'll have some subsequent ones coming uh, after uh, after block party that's in a handful of weeks for uh, other bells and whistles out of the 12.3 offerings. So Dre, I think I'm about um, at my ropes end on content, sir. So uh, do we have any questions from the, uh, the group today? I think you're muted, sir. Sorry, buddy, did I lose you? Looks like you're muted. Hopefully he didn't have any, uh, any outages. Let me just pull this over and see if there's any chat speaking of such. Dre, you're out there, buddy. We're ready to move on to the, uh, the Q&A section of the webinar and then get to the uh, the gift card that everyone is anticipating. anticipating. All right, maybe perhaps Dre may have had an outage here. All right, um, I don't, I'll let me, I guess let me back probably here. I can stop the sharing and then I'll get access to the chat panel and see if there's any chance that we're waiting. Not sure what happened to Dre. Okay, Mohammed has a question here. Does Cube CDR show original inbound number, translated number as well in case number and getting translated somewhere in Cube? Um, that is a great question, Mohammed. We actually will be, um, you will be able to search that stuff down. So we will be able to see the untranslated number in the, uh, the data format coming out of Cube, obviously before it gets to call manager and hits the translation patterns. Yes, you will be able to see that in the, uh, in the Cube data elements, whether it's a history search or if you're building it in a, uh, a report and or a dashboard widget, but yes. 
right? Uh, where's Chris have for us? I saw in the list in the 12.3 on your support page previously, but it's not there anymore. Will you have some time to have the time correction for the overnight reports? Uh, that is a great question, Chris. Uh, I'm not 100% certain on that, but I will most certainly get that answered for you and uh, follow up with you right after this webinar. All right, I have documented that. Uh, if there are any, any, if there are any other questions at the moment, please feel free to go ahead and shoot them over to me in the Q and A panel. If not, I will segue over to the, the gift card announcement. Unfortunately, I have lost uh, access to the slide deck at the moment, so I will just shoot from the hip. So let's give ten seconds for anyone else to propose a question. If not, we will head on over to the gift card announcement. All right, no more questions. Okay, so uh, I do apologize. There's no screen slick for me to share with this, but uh, for this week's weekly $50 Amazon gift card webinar winner is Paul Giacchetto. Woo! Congratulations, Paul. We will be in contact with your account manager and get you uh, paid out those $50 accordingly very soon. Okay, uh, everyone else that's still uh, on the call here for us, I do wanna make you aware of, once again, that the uh, next week's webinar will be, I believe it's Mike and Victor that are gonna go through and uh, cover the uh, the CCX handle and ring no answer report, new, new reportable options in depth. I just covered them at the high level. They will go further in depth on anything. Uh, if there are any other questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us, support at Verify or contact your Verify account rep. But thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you all.